So let's jump into how the Kudos application was built. We're going to start in the SAP Build lobby. And we call it the lobby because it's the place you always start in order to get to work. We've got everything here that you need to manage your projects. There's a store where you can find a lot of pre-built content that you can access very easily and just add to your projects and start you building on it right away. You can monitor everything that's going on in your system and, and configure various things. Also, what you're going to do most often here in the lobby is you're going to, you know, build things. And to do that, you'll, you can just go to the create. And here you can see you can build applications. That includes web and mobile applications, backend applications. Um, and even for professional development, you can access the professional developer tools here. And you can build processes, so, so workflow processes, uh, task automation or bots, and actions, which are connectors that we use to connect to things like the third-party service that we're using here. And of course, you can do business sites. So this is going to allow you to create that SAP Build Work Zone site that we used for the uh, the kudos uh, for users to access their kudos. Uh, but we've already got these built out, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, show you some of those. Um, and we'll start with the front end application. So this is going to uh, take us into SAP Build Apps. And SAP Build Apps, you'll see it's a fairly straightforward environment for building applications. On the left, you've got a number of different uh, components. So it's a palette of different kinds of components. Now, very often, these are great for building things up like this, but sometimes you want something that's like already built for you out of the box. And for that, we can go to our Marketplace. Marketplace has uh, hundreds and hundreds of pre-built components here so I can search for some really useful components like here's a number of different kinds of of lists with images and and uh, and different types of, of lists that I can just add to my project or things you know like uh, charts like if I need a chart component I can look up charts I can look at these components and once you found a component you can get a you know description of it and you can easily just click here install and it'll add it to your project these are all free components that you can easily access uh, and take advantage of, of any of these once you have your components you're going to you know you're going to drag and drop these on your on your page um, you know fairly conventional application building visual drag and drop you know what you see is what you get paradigm and as you're putting the components on your ui on your on your canvas you can select these components and you can set various properties on these. Now, one of the first things that I'm going to want to do with my application before I actually do anything with it is I need to, of course, make sure that everything is secure. And to do that, you know, I'm going to enable authentication to our system. And so for this, I'm going to just go to the authentication tab. Now, I've already got the BTP authentication enabled here, so there's nothing for me to do. But it's literally just one button to click, and it's going to add your BTP authentication. There's a couple things about that that's really cool. Um, first of all, it's super easy. Uh, if, you, if you're a developer and you've done you know OAuth authentication flows and work with uh, browser certificates and these kinds of things you know that stuff is actually really complicated and so we've made it super easy literally one click to be honest what's even more important than the fact that it's easy is the fact that you can't do it wrong that philosophy sort of permeates throughout SAP build we want to make things easy for you and we want to make it easy for you to do things the right way the industry standard way the best you know the way that implements the best practices for development. And so that's just one example, one click to enable uh, full BTP authentication. Um, once you've authenticated, now you're going to want to access your data. So for this, I can go to my data tab and you can see here a number of data sources that I'm connecting to. So let me just go ahead and show you how that works. So I want to add an integration to some kind of data source. I can say add integration. And here I want to connect to an SAP system. I'll show you the Visual Cloud functions in just a moment. Um, but on the SAP systems, you see here, I have a, a few destinations. Uh, these are called SAP destinations. If you're familiar with BTP, you'll know exactly what these are. These are configurations that have been set up saying, here are the backends that I'm allowing my low code developers to connect to. So we've got this, this Tango, this third party Tango service. We've got a link to process automation so we can do some things with the, with the running processes. And we've got a success factor. And so I'm gonna go ahead and connect that success factors uh, back in here. I can just easily browse all of the entities that I have access to, including this, this custom kudos entity that has already been created for this kudos solution. And so here you can see that I've got all of my, my fields. All of that is right here. Um, and I can also browse the data in case there's any question, is this the, is this the right data? I can, I can browse that system. So I can access all of my SAP systems this way. I can easily browse the entities that are available to me with one click. 
add them to my project. I don't have to know about, you know, REST URLs and headers and all of this kind of complexity and integrating it with the authentication. All of that is just done for me. All I need to know is what is the business data I need to access, and I can add that to my project. And I've got additional entities that I created using Visual Cloud Functions to extend this functionality, this kudos functionality that was implemented in SuccessFactor. So I've got my award entity and my award type entity. I can browse the, that data. Um, and these are created in Visual Cloud Functions. So that's great. I've got, I've got my data here and now I can build my UI with that. Um, I can also, of course, do things. I can set the various properties on the components. Uh, I can also change the styles of these components. So I can style them exactly like I need. There's a bunch of preset styles here. Uh, and I can also def completely define and have complete fine grain, grain control over every aspect of it, you know, fonts and colors and alignment and all that kind of all that kind of stuff. And I can also control the layout here. I can choose, you know, how the kind of the spacing around it, um, the sizing of it, and uh, the, if I really needed to control, if I really needed pixel perfect control and I want to uh, precisely control the position, I'm able to do that too. But usually you're going to want things to be really responsive. You're going to let the, the container uh, do the layout and that's going to be the default. But anytime I need really precise pixel perfect control, I can do all of that. Uh, so that's going to give my, me my user interface, but what about the business logic? under variables here. Now I need to bring that data into this particular page. And I have data variables, and this is where I'm going to set up the connection to the data for this page. So you can see I'm connecting to uh, that kudos entity coming from success factors. Here I'm going to set the business logic related to this entity. And this is where the, uh, the visual flow functions come in. So as soon as the page is displayed, it's going to trigger an event called page mounted. And the first thing it's going to do is it's going to fetch the records from of that collection. Then it's going to set that into this variable. So this variable is how my application components are going to see that data. These properties are set by binding to a value. So, uh, so you bind it to some kind of value. And these bindings can be static objects. Uh, you can bind it to the variables. I talked about the application level variables, the page variables. In this case, I'm... Um, uh, binding it to a formula. So formula is going to let me do some kind of calculation or transformation. The formula syntax is very much like a an Excel syntax. So if you can write Excel function, you can write these formulas and these. And so this is what it looks like. What's really great about this is that um, any kind of business logic you need to do, I can access here. Again, I have access in the formulas to those same variables that I had through the drag and drop. I can access you know, my application variables, my page variables, my sensor variables from my mobile device, my, you know, system variables. Um, but then there's all these functions. Now the functions include, you know, simple things like I just need the length of a string or I need to convert a string to lowercase or I need to, you know, extract something from part of a string, right? These, these kinds of functions are all here. There's various math functions here. There's hundreds of these functions, including some more sophisticated functions. So especially like in these list functions, there's functions that do things that if you're, if you're a programmer, you're probably familiar with the concepts of, of map and reduce, you know, things that let, allow you to work on uh, lists and arrays in, in really sophisticated manners. What's really great about that is this combination of these visual flow functions to, to set up what happens in response to various application events and how they flow from one uh, operation to another, and then the ability to bind these to different values using those formula functions gives you a really, really powerful visual programming model that really sets build apps apart from really anything else. These flow functions here, there's also a palette of those. So any, and this has things like, you know, if I want to navigate to a page, I have a navigation functions. I can set variables, we talked about those. Uh, I can pop up dialogues or toast messages, uh, confirmation dialogue. Um, I can access data, so I can fetch records. I can, I can execute functions. 
uh, on the on the cloud those visual cloud functions I can get lists of objects or individual objects um, I can uh, update records uh, and uh, and delete records so anything that I need to do to manipulate data here um, I can do that uh, you know just like we're doing here we're getting that record collection here I can access device features I want to scan a, a, a barcode or a QR code or I want to take a picture or I want to get a uh, geo uh, location point out of my uh, mobile device. Um, I can do those here in response to these uh, in, in these flow functions. Of course, now I've laid this all out. I've set it all up. Now I'm going to want to test it out. And for that, I can go ahead and go to my launch screen and um, open my preview portal. Now I can preview either on my mobile device, which is a really great feature, or I can preview in the web browser, which is just really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I can launch my Kudos app. I can have it automatically generate sample data for me, but I've already got uh, data in there, so I don't need to do that. Um, but now I can open up the preview. Now, of course, this is responsive and I'm in a browser window, so it's going to fill my whole screen. You saw it earlier when it was in the smaller form factor in WorkZone as well. So that is my uh, application side of it. We we'll also want to take a look at the, the workflow. Now we'll go into the workflow that I created with SAP Build Process Automation. In my workflow, I've got an approval form. I've got uh, a grant notification form and a rejection form in case it is rejected. And I've got the actual workflow process for that. So let's go in, into that process. And you see here, it's a fairly straightforward uh, workflow. Um, I've got a trigger coming that is that is going to be used to start the process. So from here, we're going to go into the approval form, um, and here um, you can see the in the form itself. This is the form we saw earlier. We've just laid out again. It's a, just a very simple what you see is what you get editor, where we can lay out the uh, the the fields that is going to that are going to present the information to the user and any input fields, for example, the manager's comments that we are collecting here, that's all laid out on this form, uh, which will then be displayed in the pro in the workflow process accessed through the the workflow inbox. So this is the the approval form. Uh, there's also a, that grant notification just informing the employee that they are receiving the grant. In case it's rejected, there's a rejection notice that's sent to the person who wanted to send it. Finally, when it is approved and it's gone through the approval process, we want to go ahead and actually send that, that gift card. And this is where we've integrated a third party service. And to do that, we're using an action. Action is like the connector to the, the third party service. So you see here, I don't have to have any URLs or API headers or anything like that. I've just selected the action here um, from, from the library of, of actions that have been set up for this. So that's the real easy way to, uh, to, to create those integrations without the developers having to understand the complexities of the integrations. They'll just be able to select them here and provide the required input. So here we're passing in what's the award value uh, to this service, what the recipient's email is, their name, and the, uh, the award ID of the, the actual you know, gift card that, uh, that was uh, selected for them. This, of course, is going to trigger that third-party service to generate a gift card that, and, and the associated email um, that or allow that, uh, the, that recipient to um, use it. So that's our workflow process. The final piece that we want to look at is how this was embedded in WorkZone, how it was integrated into WorkZone. And to do that, we'll go back to the lobby and we'll go ahead and go into WorkZone. And you see an SAP build WorkZone. Well, in this case, I've just got this one workspace. Uh, you can have, of course, any number of these, but I've got my Kudos workspace. But to create this, all I had to do was I had to go into editor mode. Of course, I have the, the rights to do that. And you can see here, I can add things to any part of the screen. I can add com uh, components in between other components. I can add them to the top, to the left, to the right. And there's a, a huge catalog of different kinds of components I can add here to your workspaces. I can add, you know, things like, of course, images. I can add multimedia. I can add uh, cards, various types of content, uh, workspace links. This is highly extensible, so there's a ton of different kinds of components that I can add to these screens. But this has already been added as uh, as an application card or an HTML uh, or web content card where I've got the link to the application. And you can see I've just got it configured here with the link that was generated when I deployed the application. And so I just set that up. 
I, I can then uh, publish that and now it's it's accessible to my users and so that's it everything is running here now in WorkZone. the application that we built in SAP build apps the workflow that drives the orchestration with the approvals and with the third-party integration and then finally the UI integration in SAP build WorkZone.